Revelation 21, we're going to read in verse number 1. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Father, we love you. We're thankful you first loved us. God, we're thankful when we was on that oxen block of sin, wasn't worth the powder to take the bow away. God, you came by and you purchased us with your own blood. God, we're thankful you went to Calvary and shed that precious, holy, redeeming blood for sinners such as I. Made a way where we could be saved, born again, on our way to heaven. Lord, we may face valleys, and we may fight battles, and we may face hardships and persecutions, and, and it may seem like they bind the right hand and our left hand, but thanks be unto God, uh, our soul's been saved and sealed. One day where heaven's going to be our home. Uh, Father, we're thankful for the sweet presence of the Holy Ghost in here this morning. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good fellowship, the good Sunday school hour. Now, Father, before we ever was, you knew who would be here today. You knew what we stand, stood in need of. And God, I pray you'd continue to touch hearts. I pray for that one that's low, you'd lift them up. Uh, that one that's struggling, you'd help them along. Uh, that one that is in the valley, they'd see the lily of the valley. Uh, that one that's on the mountaintop, just put a little more wind in their sails. Uh, God, but that one that may not be saved, uh, Lord, I pray today'd be the day uh, they'd find Jesus precious to their soul. Today'd be the day uh, uh, the Holy Ghost would, uh, through cords of love, draw them and let them know they need to be born again. Uh, and God, we'd see them saved today. Father, help us. Uh, Lord, I'm so full, I'm just bubbling over. So God, just help me center my thoughts and my, my mouth upon Thee. And God, may everything said and done bring glory to You. We'll praise You and thank You for what You do. Help us, Father. We'll thank You for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a few things about John. Now, it's one thing if somebody tells me they heard something. It's another thing if the media reports something. But I really get interested when somebody was there and tells me what they saw. John is an eyewitness. Now if you ask me about certain things in the Bible, there's things I couldn't tell you, I don't know. But John was an eyewitness and he was there and he's about to report to you and I. This is better than CNN, Fox, uh, and all of them put, to, uh, put together. This is uh, 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 John's account of what he experienced. Uh, can I say, first of all, uh, he saw the profoundness uh, of New Jerusalem. Uh, in verse number one, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, uh, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I'm reminded what Jesus said before he went to Calvary. He told his disciples he was going to die, and he's going to have to go away. He said he was going to send a come. This is what he said, Brother James. Uh, he said, uh, Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go and prepare a place for you, uh, I will come again and receive you unto myself, uh, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, John was there when he heard that. Uh, now John's privileged to get to go to the future. Uh, and John said, I saw what he prepared. I've seen it. I've seen it. Hey, he saw the profoundness of New Jerusalem. He said, friend, it's priceless. In chapter, on down in the chapter, he said, New Jerusalem has 
12 foundations uh, and each one of them uh, is a precious jewel. Uh, there's diamonds, uh, there's sapphires, uh, there's emeralds, uh, there's rubies, uh, and many more precious jewels. Uh, Brother Bobby said there's 12 foundations uh, and there's so many furlongs, 18 fur, so many furlongs high. Uh, and he said that uh, a, a four squared city, uh, I did the math, uh, uh, each foundation is a mile and a half high. Uh, it's 18 miles tall. Uh, the foundation uh, of New Jerusalem, uh, that's the same distance from Florence uh, to Alexandria, Kentucky. Uh, that's how tall it is. Uh, but then he said it's a 1,500 square mile city. Uh, uh, that's from here uh, uh, to just two miles uh, from the Arizona border. Uh, now think about that. Uh, from New York City to Miami uh, is only 1,284 miles. Uh, this city's bigger than that. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, 18 miles high uh, and 1,500 miles uh, of nothing but precious jewels. Uh, I mean, we get a little one in a setting and give it to our darling uh, and say we love them forever uh, till death do us part. Uh, God said, hey, uh, what I'm preparing for you uh, is so much more precious uh, that what even doesn't matter uh, is uh, far greater than you can imagine. It's priceless. Uh, and uh, you know what he said? Uh, uh, till death do us part. Uh, and he said, I'm alive, uh, was dead, uh, and I'm alive forevermore. Uh, he's never dying. Uh, there'll be no more divorce in heaven. Uh, we'll be married to the Lord forever. Hallelujah. He said it's priceless. Uh, he said it has 12 gates. Uh, each one of them is a pearl. Uh, I'm talking about a huge pearl uh, uh, to go through the gates of the city. Uh, uh, that pearl's to remind us how much he suffered and bled and died uh, for you and I to get to go. Uh, he said it's priceless. Uh, said the streets are purest gold, transparent. It's so pure, there's no impurities, there's nothing to discolor it. He said, it's priceless. He said, I've seen New Jerusalem coming down. It's priceless. Huh? Now you think about that. You try to get all the best you can. And the best you can has been tainted. But New Jerusalem is priceless. He said, I saw New Jerusalem coming down. He saw the profoundness of the city. He said, not only is it priceless, he, he said, wait till you see the presence. Look down there with me in verse 22. Just look at it. Look what he said. I'm not even preaching. Some of you are bound and going home. He said, and I saw no more temple therein. Here it is. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, for the Lamb is the light thereof. He said, all the materials are priceless. But what makes it is the presence. God's there. The Lamb and God are the temple, and the Lamb's the light of the city. No more need of the sun because of His glory. Listen, we just had a little bit of Him walking through here. Can you imagine abiding with Him? getting all of it we couldn't handle the mother load we got these little old fleshly bodies uh, that's why he's going to give us a body like his so we can just stand being in his presence uh, uh, but can I say the presence is worth it huh? then he said uh, it's perfect in chapter 22 verse 3 says and there is no more curse there's no more sin over there no more sin over there John is an eyewitness to New Jerusalem. He talks about the profoundness of it. Can I say this? He not only saw, John also heard some things. He heard the comforting promises of God. Look again in chapter number 21. Look what it says in verse number 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he said, uh, He that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. What promises he heard? He said, There be no more sorrow said, God's going to wipe the tears from your eyes. He said, there'll be no more sickness. 
be no more death, no more separation, no more pain. Listen, I'm going to heaven for Jesus. One of the benefits of heaven is I don't have to be like me. There ain't going to be no more pain, no more heartache, no more sorrow. I'm going to tell you it's sorrowful seeing what's going on in our nation. I had to turn off. I can't, I can't watch. I can't listen to it anymore. I hate being lied to. Just can't deal with it. I take comfort in the fact that it's God who sets up kings. And, and I realize America has to fall in order to fall into the one world global system. And I realize uh, all that's got to take place. And I'm just glad, hallelujah, I'm going to be out of here. We're close, friend. But we're going to a place. We never have to go to a graveside anymore because there aren't any graves. No. We're going to a place where you won't have to ever be separated anymore. you just be with one another forever. We're going to a place no more pain. No more eyeglasses. No more walkers. No more uh, uh, wheelchairs. Uh, no more cancer. Uh, 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 no more heart disease. No more stroke. Uh, uh, nothing will harm you. And those of you who come in here today with a heavy burden, God himself is going to wipe your tears away. He heard the promises of God. You know what is wonderful about coming to the house of God? Oh, we get to fellowship one with another. That's wonderful. We get to sing praise unto God. That's wonderful. But hearing the promises of God's word is what comforts us and propels us to be Christ-like in this world. John said he saw something, but what he heard even helped him more. See, the just live by faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And John said, I heard the comforting promises of God. He saw the profoundness of New Jerusalem, but then he wrote down a plea for all to hear. Look down at verse number seven or six. He said this, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. He gives a plea. He says, he that is a thirst can drink from the water of life freely. I got good news for you. If you're here today and you're not saved, are you thirsty? In other words, do you want to be saved? Well, all you got to do is accept him. You see, some people have the mindset there's got to be a bolt of lightning to tell you you need to get saved. You know, all you need to do is realize you need to get saved and then just come get saved. Hallelujah. And there's a plea here. If you're thirsty, come get the water. He's the living water. He said, I'll quench your thirst. The thirst you have in your soul, the world can't fill. There's not enough booze. There's not enough dope. There's not enough entertainment. There's not enough work for you to do. There's not enough anything to get your mind off of the fact that deep down inside you need Jesus. He said, when you realize that, when you come in thirst, he said, I'll give you the water of life freely. You can give me some. All you need to do is say, I'm tired of not having the hope that John's talking about. He'll give you hope. And then John gives us another thing in these verses. He warns of impending peril for the lost what he says in verse 8 he says but the fearful and unbelieving see if you're thirsty if you know that you need to be saved and you don't get saved that's you right there you're unbelieving you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murders and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, if you're here today in church, I dare say you're, you're a good moral person. Thieves and thugs don't come to church. They usually get church when they're in jail. We go down there and preach to them. Huh? Why would a good moral person want to spend all of eternities with abominable people and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars? That's who your neighbor's going to be. And all you're going to do is suffer together for all of eternity. He said, that crowd's going to the lake of fire and brimstone forever. 
Well, I'm interested in something in verse number 9. Look at verse number 9. The Bible says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. Here's what he said. Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. In the midst of John telling us all the great things about what's about to happen, he records his own personal invitation. An angel comes and invites him. He said, come hither. I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. I ought to preach for a few minutes this morning on come see the bride. Let's get our eyes on the bride for a little while. Get your eyes off of Biden. There ain't nothing to see there. Get your eyes on the bride. Huh? Come see the bride. You know what one of the beauties is about coming to the house of God? I get to see the bride. I get to get away from all that mess and all my problems, all my heartaches, all my troubles. I can get away from that for a little while and I can come with that crowd. I've been fitly framed together. Uh, I can come with my crowd. Uh, we can come in here and we can sing about Jesus. Uh, we can start testifying about how great He is. Uh, uh, we can start uh, uh, rejoicing and worshiping the Lord together. Uh, we can hear from the, uh, uh, the wonderful words of life. Uh, uh, our faith can be increased. We can get charged up. Uh, I can get to come and see the bride uh, and that crowd that's going to be in heaven in New Jerusalem forevermore what a blessing uh, I, I get to come and see what God died for huh? Uh, I got to think about uh, let's just take a look at the bride I want you to notice the bride's ancestry now we're talking about the lamb's wife the bride now wouldn't you think that that's the cream of the crop I mean, you go over there to England, man, they don't tell all them, them, them skull and crossbone stories about all them people that, that get on that throne. They don't tell all the, the dirty laundry stuff. You look at them, they call them royalty. Blue bloods. Well, you think the lamb's wife's better than that. Well, we're not blue bloods, but we're washed in the blood. Huh? I got to thinking about the ancestry of the bride. You, you know, if you go read Jesus' genea genealogy, you'd think, you know, those that uh, were in the genealogy of Christ before he came the first time, you'd think them were some noble crowd too. You find Rahab the harlot in there. You find, you find uh, Ruth the Moabitess in there. Uh, I got to thinking about the bride. Who's in the ancestry? There's thieves in the bride. Uh, I promise you, we get to heaven, there's going to be somebody that was a horse thief. Uh, you know, somebody, I know a car thief that's going. Larry Seals, when he got arrested, he'd stole a Cadillac. 17 years old, hair halfway down his back, and he stole a Cadillac because he always wanted to drive one. So what happened? He got born again, he got in the bride. He was driving a Cadillac. One of these days he's going to ride a chariot. Uh, I got to think about the ancestors. Hey, you know there's a lot of drunks going to be in the bride. I mean drunks. I'm talking about... Uh, 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 couldn't put the liquor down but hey they met the master uh, and he took it away uh, hey uh, there's going to be a lot of folks that did a lot of dope uh, going to be in the bride uh, 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 brother Rocky's won a lot of them because he used to be one of them hallelujah huh? hey there's going to be some of that crowd there uh, hey can I tell you uh, there's going to be some murderers in heaven uh, uh, can I say there's going to be some whoremongers in heaven uh, there's going to be some harlots in heaven in the bride uh, hey uh, they're going be some of the lowest of them. Oh, they're going to be folks that used to live in gutters and ditches. They're going to be in the bride. Uh, hey, there's some a uh, crowd uh, uh, that used to be a, a crowd you wouldn't want to hang around with. Uh, uh, there's some of them hell's angels guys going to be in the bride. Uh, uh, there's some crowd there was the roughest of the roughest, uh, the meanest of the bunch. Uh, I'm thinking of a sniper in Vietnam that killed I don't know how many people. Uh, didn't think God saved him. You know what happened? God saved him. He's going to be in the bride. Uh, he really gets to go. Uh, hey, what are you trying to say? Uh, hey, uh, there's going to be some good church members. Uh, they's raised in church, uh, never got in any filthy, wicked sin. They just rode a church pew, uh, but they got born again. They're in the bride. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, there's going to be nobles, uh, and there's going to be the off scour. Uh, but hey, what a blessing for the ancestry, because uh, we're all one in Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about the ancestry of the bride. Uh, you know, outside the blood of Christ, most of us wouldn't even hang out with one another. 
this is on a bar stool. Uh, we're in a back alley. You think about it. We have people of every different kind of people in here today. We got folks in here with a great education. We have folks in here that didn't even finish high school. We got folks that was aged on the right side of the tracks. We got some that didn't even know what tracks were till they ended up there one day. We got folks that are country people. We got folks that are city people. Huh? We got folks that have professional jobs. We have folks that are, have folks that are just glad to get a job. But Jesus loved us all. Huh? got folks from broken homes we got folks from broken broken homes uh, we got folks that had a great home life uh, we got folks that don't even know who their parents were but God loved us anyway uh, what a crowd no wonder the angel says who's that crowd uh, where'd they come from say hey they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony that's who that crowd is uh, Hey, that's that old Gentile dog nation. Uh, that's that crowd that didn't even deserve the crumbs of his table. But look, here they are. Uh, and then they're going to say, well, what are they doing? Uh, they're going to be married to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Uh, that's my crowd. Uh, let's look at the bride. We look at her ancestry. Uh, she didn't become the bride without the atonement. Leviticus chapter 17 under the law said this for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul throughout the law a lamb had to be slain in order for the sins of Israel to be pushed back for a year it was the blood that made the atonement for their sin but see uh, Thanks be unto God, this very same John penned down in his epistle about John the Baptist who was out baptizing in the river Jordan and here come Jesus. And John said, Behold the Lamb of God. He didn't say which pushes back the sin, but he said which taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus was the Lamb slain on Calvary. He shed his blood for our atonement to wash away our sin. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul wrote in Romans 5, verse number 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I don't have to worry about verse 8. I've been saved from that. He said, for if... When we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Hallelujah. Say, preacher, why does people get all excited when you start talking about Jesus? Because He atoned us from our sin. I'll be in the bride because of the atonement. No atonement, no heaven. Mm -mm. We've got to see her ancestry, but see her atonement. We're not going because of who we are, where we were born, or any of that kind of stuff. What we did, we're, we're going because of what he did. And us putting faith in him. We see the bride's ancestry, her atonement, but notice her adorning. Look in chapter 19. Look down there about verse number 7. John writes this, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Notice her adorning. You see, in order to get to chapter number 19, where we put on the wedding garment, something has to take place. We've got to go to the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the deeds done in this body, whether they be good or bad. You see, every believer has been justified by the blood of Christ. We were judged for sin at Calvary. My sin was judged at Calvary. He took all the offenses of the law that were contrary to my life and he nailed them to his cross 
and took them out of the way. I'll not be judged, Miss Cinda, at uh, the judgment of Christ, the seat of Christ for sin. That's already been taken care of. But I'll be judged for my deeds, my works after I got saved. I'll be judged with what I did with that Bible. I'll be judged with what I did with the Holy Ghost and when he dealt with me about witnessing to somebody or dealt with me about praying for somebody or dealt with me about anything, I'll be judged for that. I'll be judged with what I did for the gospel. What did I do about getting the gospel, the good news to sinners that Jesus saves? I was telling Brother Rocky last night, I know y'all don't think I pay attention, but I kind of pay attention. I listen to stuff. I've been listening to what goes on in churches. And I, I, I'm mainly talking about independent Baptist churches right now. I listen to what they're preaching. I listen to what they're singing. I listen to what they're teaching. And most churches, all they're really dealing with is glorified humanism. They're dealing with people and their problems. Well, go to Barnes & Noble's. they got a big section called self-help. And go deal with your problems you'll find the greatest counsel you ever get is from the Word of God. But everybody's dealing with all their emotional problems, all their stress problems, all their financial problems, and that's all you hear in church. All preaching is, is geared with getting people out of a valley or getting people uh, a, a financial help. Do you know why Jesus said He'd give us the Holy Ghost? Acts 1.8 that we, we, we would be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. He didn't give us the Holy Ghost to be a comforter so we can get through our little deal every day. He gave us the Holy Ghost to give us boldness to look at sinners and say, Jesus loves you, he died for you, and you're going to go to hell without him. But can I say, 98.9% .9 of all Christianity doesn't take the gospel anywhere. You know why Biden's in the White House? Because the church hadn't been the church. Uh, you talk to Trump, he'll tell you who put him in the office in 2016 was evangelical Christians. And a lot of them voted for Biden this time. Not a lot of them, only about 20 people voted for him. But how he got 80 million votes, I don't know. Must have had Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies counting what not to not and put a not head in there you know what I'm saying well, I'm just trying to tell you folks Jesus sealed us with the Holy Ghost and gave us the Holy Ghost that we would tell others about the goodness of Jesus that Jesus died for them. But most people they come to church they don't want to hear about what Jesus did for them or, or what Jesus can do for others they want, to, they want to hear about how they can get out of their mess well, one of these days he's going to get us out of the mess. But he left us here and told us to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and go out there and do your job. Tell sinners, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. That wasn't in my notes, but it didn't help you or it didn't hurt you. See, we've got to go to the judgment seat of Christ. And he's going to open the books, Brother Phil, and he's going to tell you everything you did, good or bad. He's going to judge you. And you see, it's there that 1 Corinthians 3 comes into place where all them rewards come in. Gold, silver, precious stone, or wood, hay, and stubble. Because all of our deeds are going to be tried by fire. And those things which are precious, he's going to give to us as rewards. And we're going to lay them down at his feet, Brother Phil. Amen. Brother Ray, we're going to lay them down at his feet because he's the one worthy. Yes, sir. But then after that, it says his wife had made herself ready. We get to put on the wedding garment. And he says it's a fine twine linen. It is the righteousness of the saints. Can you imagine a wedding garment, garment so precious that it's called the righteousness of the saints? You see, right now you're, you're robed in his righteousness. See, when he saved you, he not only forgave you of your sins he sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise and that inward man the moment you got saved he never sins anymore I'm not talking about this outer man that's a whole different message but then he robed you in his righteousness so when he looks at you he don't see you he sees himself but after he judges you in your deeds by fire 
He's going to give you a garment where you're going to have your own righteousness, which reflects his righteousness. Think about that. Now, let me just help you something. Y'all, y'all, y'all aren't with me. Let me help you. Let me go talk to Mark. He needs to hear some preaching. All right, listen here, big boy. Now, think about this. Get this through your pea brain, all right? Jesus, we know in John chapter 1 that he's the one that made everything. He made everything that we enjoy in six days on the seventh day he rested. He told John, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. John said, I saw a prepared place coming out of heaven. Now, if he made all this in six days, can you imagine what it's taken him 2,000 years to make? Huh? If I don't do something for you. Huh? If that don't do something for you. I mean, uh, 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 it's been 2,000 years he's been working on this thing. Huh? Now, think about it. And then you'll adorn that garment that reflects him. Everybody knows at the wedding, all the attention's on the bride. Go open that back door, she comes in. Last one, Miss Tay come in. Everybody's looking at ooh and ah, and her daddy was in his, his marine outfit, and everybody's going, oh, doesn't she look so beautiful, and all that. Come down the aisle and, and everything. Then they looked up Christian crying like a baby. Y'all remember that? <laughs> we get to heaven, the attention's not going to be on the bride. All we do is reflect, and the attention goes on the groom. Because he's the one that made it possible for us to be there. Because he paid our way. Huh? You see, under Bible days, the, there would be arranged marriages. And the father of the, of the bride would pay a dowry to the father of the groom to take his bride. How ugly were the women back then? But they had to pay them to get them. Huh? But you see, when Jesus fulfilled the law... And gave us the new text. He said, wait a second. He said, I'm going to pray for, pay for my bride. The picture's in Genesis 24 when the servant went and got, got Isaac's bride. Uh, I got news for you. The servant, the Holy Ghost, came and got us. And he paid our debt. Oh, we see the adorning. You know, the bride has access. The bride gets to go everywhere the bridegroom is. See, we have access to him right now. All you got to do is say, Lord, he's right there. He hears every time you call upon his name. But we'll just get to be with him everywhere he goes. Then let me say this. The bride has an allocation. She has a future. Yeah. She'll reside with Christ. She'll reign with Christ. She'll reverence Christ. And she'll rejoice evermore because of Christ. What a future. Huh? Hey, if you don't like church, you won't like heaven. This is just getting us prepared for going there. Huh? If you think it gets too loud here, you don't want to go to heaven. Huh? Over there in Revelation 5, it talks about that. There's thousands upon thousands upon ten thousands. And they're all crying, worthy is the Lamb. They're shouting their lungs out. Huh? We'll just be with Him. But let me close with this. There is an appeal from the bride. Look with me in chapter 22. Verse 17, the Bible says, And the Spirit, if you've got the right Bible, that's capitalized. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the what? Say it. And the Spirit and the Bride say what? Come. Come. Let him that hear say, come. Let him that is a thirst, there it is, again, come. And whosoever will, that means you, friend, if you're not saved, let him take of the water of life freely. The bride, the last mention of her in the Scripture, she is giving an appeal. She is pleading for you to come join the bride. If you're not born again, I'd run to get born again. Friend, I don't know how, I, I mean... Who would ever thought in America they got to guard the Capitol for an inauguration? That don't sound like an inauguration. That sounds like a takeover. Yeah. Can I say there's coming a day Jesus is really going to take over? Yeah. I'm glad I'm with him and he's with me. Yeah. Right. But the bride says, come on. You know, a lot of people, when they're not saved, they come to church, they see the crowd this size, they think, boy, if I go forward, what will people think? Well, let me help you something. I promise you, there's people in here who's a lot worse shape than you are right now. They were at one time. 
You know what this, this crowd says? This crowd says, come on to Jesus. This crowd says, we're for you, not against you. This crowd says, we, we, we long for you to experience what we experience. There's nothing like having peace in your soul that you're right with God. There's nothing like knowing that your sins have been washed away. There's nothing like knowing the love of God and the joy of the Lord. There's nothing like it. You can't put it in words. That's why some people smile, some people shout, some people cry. It's just so wonderful, we just get beside ourselves. And you know what? We want everybody to have that. If you don't know him today, be a good day. Just look around. Look at the crowd in here today with the smiles and the tears and the hand waving. Do they look like they got any problems? Now listen to me, friend. They do. They have hurts. They have fears. They have needs. But what they have found is Jesus is greater than all that. And they know deep down inside he's going to take care of it all. It'll be all right. Hmm? Brother Greg's choir sings a song, There's No Need to Doubt Him Now. He's been good. And this crowd comes in and rejoices because they know that he's been so good to them, far better than they deserved. And they come to just let him know how much they appreciate it. And you know what they say to you today if you're not saved? Why don't you just come? You know what the Spirit of God is saying right now inside your heart? You need to be saved. Come. Just take a drink of the water of life. Huh? Jesus told that woman to well. He said, the water I give you, you'll never thirst again. And friend, if you take a drink of what he offers, you'll never want to drink of anything the world has anymore. Friend, he loves you. He died for you. I want you to be part of the bride. If you're not, I'd get, I'd get in today. Just come. The moment we're going to have an invitation, all we're going to say is come. Just come. Come to Jesus. Friend, he'll change your life. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, we'll show you how to be saved. And I'll make you this promise. If you'll take the first step, he'll help you take the rest. Hmm. Huh? But Rocky, I believe in my, in my heart, I believe when folks take that first step, that's when they get born again. All the rest of it is formality. Right there, when they say yes to Jesus, it's taken care of. Say, preacher, how do I know that today's the right time? How do I know if the Lord's convicted me? How do I know? Well, if you know you're lost, the Bible says today's the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. You don't need to wait. If you know, well, you need to come. You might even be having an argument in your head. Your argument's not with me. I can't hear a word you're thinking. Your argument's with the Lord. He's saying, come, and that old nature, and that sorry, no good devil, saying, I'll just put it off. Just come. Get part of the bride. It'll be the best day of your life. Until we get there. Can you imagine what that's like? One of these days, it'd be reality. I wonder. You ready to come? If you're part of the bride, you ought to come thank him. You're in the bride. If he's been good to you, you ought to let him know. Maybe during the invitation, God just spoke to your heart and said, maybe somebody here is really hurting. I don't know. And the Holy Ghost do wonderful things, but God sometimes uses human interaction with human interaction. The Holy Ghost might, I just want you to go put your arms around somebody and say, you know what, I just want you to know I love you. You never know what that will do for you. You be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song. If you're not saved, why don't you come? Get in the bride. Nothing like it. If Disney World could, could bottle up what I got in my soul, Lord have mercy. Nothing like it. Folks are coming. If you're not saved, why don't you come? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the promises of the Scriptures. Lord, you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I believe in my heart there's folks here today that need to be saved. Lord, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost just, just pull and tug at their heart to where they take that first step. Help them to come, Lord. Get in the bride. Lord, I'm thankful I'm in the bride. Glad I'm going to heaven, Lord. Lord, I'm hastening, looking forward to that day. Lord, I understand a little bit about what Paul said. He was torn betwixt the two, whether stay or go. God, help us now. Blessing this invitation.
Help your people. Lord, and that one that's low, send somebody by them. Just be an encouragement. God, just do something great in this invitation. Save that one nearest hell. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.